All right, so let's say you're taking a statistics course and you're asked the question, I score a 1480 on the SAT. SAT scores are normally distributed with a mean of 1690 and a standard deviation of 237. What percentage of students did better than me on the SAT? Now, the book method, which I'm going to demonstrate right here, the book method is going to be that you take your your score in question, your X, your mean or your average, and your standard deviation, and you find a Z score, which is your score in question minus your average divided by your standard deviation. I've already done that here in my formula, uh, or in my cell here, I get negative 0.88608. And any teacher is going to tell you to round that to two decimal places. So you're going to round that to negative 0.88. Nine. And you're going to go to your standard normal distribution here, and you're going to find z equals negative 0.8. Read all the way over to this right hand column, negative 0.89, and you see 0 0.1867. 0 0.1867. That is the area to the left of your z score, and that's denoted by this figure here that shows the z-score and then it's shaded to the left. So that's the area to the left. The cumulative area of this z of this uh, standard normal distribution is 1. So the area to the left plus the area to the right totals to 1. So if I want to find the area to the right, I can subtract this area from 1 and I get 0.8133. Okay, so there's my answer, 0.8133. And that's how we do it the old-fashioned way, using the book and tables. If you want to use Excel for the exact same thing, you skip the z-score. You don't need this. It's unnecessary. You don't have to have it, so we'll just read that out. We don't need that. We're going to skip straight to what we want, which is the area to the left of the curve, the score from the standard normal distribution table, the percentage from standard normal distribution table. So how we do that is this command in Excel, you hit equals, anytime you want a formula, you hit equals, and you type N-O-R-M dot D-I-S-T, norm dist, open a parentheses, it's going to ask you for four things, X, mean, and standard deviation, which are the three things you need from your Z-score formula. You have two options here. You can click 1480 in the cell that it's in, or you can type 1480 either way you want. Okay. Some people prefer to type the number. Some people prefer, I prefer to click on cells. So I click that cell, put a comma. Now it wants the mean. So I click on the mean, put a comma. Click on the standard deviation, put a comma. And to get the same information that you get from reading the table, you're going to type true. That's the cumulative distribution function. And when I press enter, I'm going to get the same number, basically. Now, you notice I get 0.1877. Here, I get 0.1867. The reason for that is, if you look at my z-score, I got 0.886. I had to round that to two decimal places because the table in my book only goes to two decimal places. Excel actually uses built-in functions to find the number, not, well, this is close enough. Okay, so this, this score from Excel is actually better. So doing it by the table, 18.67% of students are below me. Using Excel, 18.78% of students are below me. So it is a small change. Then to find the area of the right, it's the same procedure. It's 1 minus the area to the left, and I get 0.8122. So very similar results, very close. That's how you take a, a z-score problem where you're trying to find the area under the standard normal distribution and do it in Excel. If you know the, the value in question, the mean, and the standard deviation, you don't have to find a z-score. You just type norm.dist and then give it what it asks for, which is the score in question, the mean, the standard deviation, and then the last one is always true. The fun thing about this is once you've typed this in one time, so here's the formula, and here's this formula, 
you can go back and say, well, what if I scored a 1900? And it automatically updates these scores for you. What if I scored a 2000? Uh, what if I scored a 2100? And so it very, very quickly, whereas with the book method, if I say, well, what if I scored a 2100? I manually calculated the z-score, so I would have to go back and manually calculate that again. So it's kind of fun. You can say, well, what if I scored an 1100? Oh, well, 99% of people scored better than me. 2100, only 4% of people scored better than me. So it's a quick way to play with z-scores in the standard normal distribution versus trying to play with this table here in blue and white that's out of a standard statistics textbook. If you have any questions, please let me know.